City Council is making more of an effort to revitalize downtown Lloydminster. The Downtown Improvement Program is designed to support local businesses with grant funding to be used specifically to boost their street appeal. How do we improve the attraction of downtown? And facade is one of those. Simply having that catchy front that says, oh, that's kind of one of those niche stores that you don't find in that throughout the city, and it catches somebody's attention. Council made some recent adjustments to the program, which was passed over a year ago, focusing more on the redevelopment of certain infrastructure. Updating to that, that policy, where if someone's ready to actually see their building reach an end of life, that they want to take the next step, we're willing to work with them to see that new development spring up downtown, where the building may have reached its end, that it's just not uh, worth the owner investing more good money, uh, just as the city runs through that process. Since the program started last year, over $70,000 in grant funding has been given to businesses in the downtown area. The legendary chuck wagon driver Ray Mitsuing died yesterday at the age of 70. The chuck wagon world is grieving but also remembering the excellence of the man both on and off the track. Our Thomas Wildman has a tribute to Ray Mitsuing. The second show I went, I have to get lucky and win that one right off the start and then it just continued from there. Uh, you know, like I was always in there. as. A competitor. One of the greatest to ever turn and burn. Ray Mitzwing of Loon Lake had an illustrious 36 year career, which included seven CPCA Chuck Wagon Championships and a 1992 Rangeland Derby Aggregate Championship, and was an inspiration to all. You know, Preston Faithful is a driver uh, that uh, went to the Calgary Stampede first time for him, for a First Nation driver for himself. And he said that when he saw Ray Mitzwing on the Calgary Stampede track, is when a young kid in Frog Lake said, I want to be like that. And it's like, so that tells you what he meant to First Nation youth and the now Preston Faithful, now a veteran driver, you know, models himself after Ray Mitzwing. As competitive as Mitzwing was, he also was a great friend to many in the sport of chuck wagon racing. I've known Ray since I've been in like grade three. Uh, I went to school with his son, Dean Mitzwing. We, like, we grew up together, best friends when we were growing up. And yeah, through when I started out riding towards the night out road for Ray and start driving and he was like a mentor to me too right when i had questions i'd go ask him and he'd help me out if i was short a horse when i first started he helped me out that way too and it's gonna be missed like what he what he did in wagon racing that's what a lot of us want to succeed too right mitzwing retired from chuck wagon racing in 2019 but continued to help out his sons dale darren devon and dean who continued to race for the mitzwing name in the cpca he also continued to be an important part of the loon lake first nation alongside his wife josephine Ray not only made his mark on the chuck wagon track, but also in the hearts of chuck wagon fans, and will forever be remembered as the first ever chuck wagon driver to be inducted into the Saskatchewan Sports Hall of Fame this fall. Thomas Wildman, Primetime, Local News. Abby St. John is back in with the weather now for a second look at our forecast. Thanks so much, Leanne. We are sitting at 7 degrees. It feels closer to 4 with that wind chill, so it does feel a little bit cooler. It was uh, quite windy out today and yesterday as well. 20 kilometer per hour winds currently, and uh, those clouds are rolling in, and it will be quite cloudy um, into this evening. So it wasn't too too bad of a day, but it could have been definitely could have been warmer uh, across Alberta. Eight degrees also out in Cold Lake, seven in Red Deer and Athabasca, six in Edmonton, White Court and Edson, nine in Jasper and five in Rocky Mountain House. And in Saskatchewan, eight degrees in Meadow Lake, 12 in Prince Albert, 13 in Mouthfort. 14 in Saskatoon and 11 out in North Battleford. If we head up north in Saskatchewan, minus 6 in Uranium City, minus 5 in Stony Rapids, minus 3 in Wollaston Lake, plus 3 in La Loche and Buffalo Narrows, 4 in South End and 9 in Flin Flon. And in Alberta, 3 degrees in Fort Chippewan, 8 in High Level and Peace River, 9 in Grand Prairie and 6 out in Slave Lake. 
And if we head down south in Alberta, 11 degrees out in Coronation, 16 in Medicine Hat, 12 in Lethbridge, 6 in Calgary, and 4 out in Banff. And in Saskatchewan, uh, 13 degrees out in Kindersley, 16 in Swift Current, 18 in Moose Jaw, Regina, and Yorkton, and 20 out in Estevan. Overnight tonight, North Battleford will drop down to minus 1. It will be partially cloudy, so, but it will feel colder, obviously. Being below 0, 17 kilometer per hour winds as well will make it feel even cooler. Uh, overnight tonight, Cold Lake will drop down to minus 7. Mostly clear, but it will be quite cold. Uh, 13 kilometer per hour winds as well. And then more overnight temperatures across the region. Uh, it will cool down in most areas. Minus 5 in Meadow Lake and Bonneville. 2 in Provost. Minus 4 in uh, La Crosse. And minus 3 out in Paradise Hill. About a 23% chance of, of some precipitation in Provost. But other than that, it will just be quite cloudy in most of the area. Um, and it will be quite chilly out. More overnight temperatures, zero in Murnham, Unity, and Wainwright, minus seven in Pierceland, and one out in Calgary. 20% uh, chance of, any, of some precipitation in Unity and in Wainwright. Not a huge chance, but there is that chance nonetheless. But mostly cloudy skies is predicted overnight tonight. Overnight tonight here in Lloydminster, we will also, those clouds will start to roll in as well. Minus one will be our low for this evening uh, and winds will be at 15 kilometers per hour. And it will be quite windy and that will carry over into tomorrow as it will be quite windy tomorrow. Quite cloudy as well, a high of 14 and a low of 5. And then on Sunday, a 60% chance of some afternoon showers, mix of sun and cloud with a high of 19 and a low of 4. On Monday, 84% chance of some showers as well, and it will be quite cloudy uh, throughout the day with a high of 16 and a low of 2. On Tuesday, another cloudy day is predicted with a high of 14 and a low of 0. On Wednesday, it cools off again with a high of 11 and a low of 1, mix of sun and cloud. On Thursday, 75% chance of some afternoon rain with a high of 13 and a low of 1. And then it's back on Friday. It'll be another cloudy day with a high of 15 and a low of 0. So at least we're getting some rain. That is always nice, uh, especially at this time of year. It's always nice to see. But that is a look at your evening weather forecast. We'll have more news coming up after the break. Will Granger joins me today as he's with the Board of Directors at Lakeland Disc Golf Association. Will, thanks so much for your time today. How's it going? Hey, not too bad. Thanks for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. So tell me a bit about this club and how long has it been going on for Will? Um, we started the club in 2021 and we basically just four of us came together and decided that we needed a more focal point for say like the city of Lloyd or surrounding uh, municipalities to be able to reach out to us for all things uh, disc golf, just because up to that point, say if there was an opportunity for a new course or if there was changes to the existing courses, there was uh, no point of contact for the city. Like they, they would have no idea how to go about getting word out. So that's, that's kind of why we stepped up. And as part of that, we, started to run like disc golf leagues and yeah it kind of grew from there cool so you started this league and have you seen popularity in the sport kind of grow here in lloyd minster will oh for sure yeah when i started i was actually surprised to uh find that like a few friends of mine had played already and like were willing to play but it was a, it was a very small group of people and like you didn't often at that time see players playing Bud Miller. Like you'd go out there and have the place to yourself. Whereas now it's not uncommon to go out on a Saturday, Sunday, and you'll see families with kids playing. You'll see just like all, all ranges of people on different holes. And the majority of which I, I won't know them personally, which uh, it's, a, it's a new change and it's pretty awesome to see. And speaking on that, do you guys allow people of all levels and experience uh, to come in and play with you guys? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, when it comes to our league night, like as of now, we don't even break it into divisions. It's just kind of 
you go there, get thrown into a car to four and just go play around. And we find that's a great way for the newer players to get paired up with some of the veteran players. And you like, you, you'll learn a lot through this. And like, we absolutely have the time of day to teach any new player better methods of throwing, that kind of thing. As interested in as they are in learning, like we're just as interested in teaching. So you talked a bit about league night. What days are those? Um, right now we're doing every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. Once uh, we get a little bit more daylight, we switch it to 6 p.m. and then we'll ride that out until basically until it snows <laughs> is when we call our quits. But yeah, we're out there every single week. And is there anything else you want the public to know about the association or disc golf as a whole, Will? Um, yeah, just as a whole, like we have a pretty busy summer coming up planned. Uh, we have our first PDGA sanctioned, so professional disc golf sanctioned tournament that we're running the end of August. So we just opened up registration for that. So we're definitely building up to uh, running that uh, out at the Kids Scotty course. So full full meal deal. We'll have uh, three rounds. Uh, the pros play for cash. We want to have some sort of player party element to it just to kind of get people to come together in the region and celebrate disc golf. And with that, like we've been seeing through signups, we have people from all over Alberta and Saskatchewan that have signed up. So that's fun to see, fun to bring new players to the area to check out what we're trying to build here. Thanks so much, Will. It sounds like a very fun summer ahead. And thanks again for your time. Absolutely. No worries, no worries. Thanks for having me. Coming up on Wednesday night in Vermilion, Vibe is inviting you to join them for their 10th Mental Health Art Gala. You've got an opportunity to take a look at some amazing works of art that youth in the area have created. Plus, there's going to be an opportunity to take part in free art activities. You can enjoy some dessert. There's a chance to win a door prize and so much more. This event is free to attend. You can drop in anytime between 5 and 9 p.m. Coming up on Wednesday, May the 1st at the Vermilion Regional Centre. The amazing talent in country music in Saskatchewan, it's going to be celebrated in Lloydminster coming up in June. The Vic Juba Community Theatre, they're getting set to host the Saskatchewan Country Music Association Awards. And there's a number of different activities that are planned throughout the awards and they all get underway on June the 20th. That Thursday night is the third in the Lloyd Local Series and that's going to feature Dylan Hansen and the Rough Cuts. Then the following night, it's the Vic's Crank It Up kickoff concert and then the Saturday night June 22nd that is the 35th annual Saskatchewan Country Music Association Awards show what a weekend it's going to be to celebrate great country music in Saskatchewan and you can get all the details and get your tickets now so you don't miss out at victubatheater.ca and coming up next Friday night, May the 3rd, the Kitscotty Rugrats Play School, they're hosting the Grand Dueling Piano Show. Tickets are available now. Get them now before they're gone. You'll find a link on their Facebook page. Well, whatever you choose to do this weekend, we hope you stay safe and stay healthy. What's Happening is brought to you by Northern Factory Workwear, Circle Drive East, Saskatoon, and Highway 17 South, Lloydminster. Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery, downtown Lloydminster. I'm happy to be joined here today by Tyler McMurchie with SGI. Thank you so much for joining me. It's great to be here. Now we're almost through April, heading into May, and the spring-summer season is right around the corner. But today we'll be talking about March and the number of tickets that were given out. Um, there were a number of tickets given out for a number of infractions, whether it's impaired driving, distracted driving. Um, can you break down those numbers for us? Sure. Our focus uh, for March was on impaired driving, and so, uh, um, but every month as part of the Traffic Safety Spotlights, uh, police across Saskatchewan report back on not only what the focus of the month is, but also what we call the, the rest of the big four. So that's impaired driving, distracted driving, speeding, and uh, seatbelt violations. And uh, so when we, we look at the numbers for, for March, uh, just run through them really quick, we saw 
uh, 454 impaired driving offenses. That includes 312 uh, um, administrative suspensions for exceeding provincial limits, and then 142 criminal code charges. Uh, on, the, on the rest of the big four, we saw 548 tickets for distracted driving, 375 tickets for seatbelts or, or car seat offenses, and then 400, or sorry, 4,473 tickets for speeding and aggressive driving offenses. And uh, you, you mentioned the weather get, is getting nice, and uh, we want people to uh, go out, enjoy the all too brief nice weather that we uh, have here on the, the Canadian prairies because, you know, winter will, will is always looming, it seems. But, uh, but as you hit, hit the road, just understanding that there's going to be lots of other people out enjoying the, the weather as well with uh, uh, motorcycles, bicycles, skateboards, scooters, and uh, pedestrians as well. And so just making sure that we keep, keep uh, an eye on our driving, making sure that we're following all the, the, the rules of the road and helping keep everybody safe. Now, comparatively to other years, are these numbers high for the month of March? Actually, so I did actually take a look at the last three marches, the last three years worth of marches. And uh, for the March results, if you average them out, um, the, the numbers for distracted driving, uh, seatbelt and car seat offenses and speeding were all down from that three year average a, a little bit. So that's good. I mean, we of course, don't want to see anybody getting a ticket. We don't want to see anybody uh, engaging in any kind of behavior that uh, increases the risk to them that they'll be injured or worse in a, in a motor vehicle accident. But the numbers are down somewhat. When it came to the main focus, though, of uh, the impaired driving, that number is up uh, slightly. Um, it was, uh, you know, 454 total. Uh, the, I think, three-year average was uh, under 400. Uh, but... We, we have seen a couple of interesting trends when it comes to impaired driving offenses. And uh, uh, we've maybe talked about this before on this program, but we, we're seeing the number of administrative suspensions for um, uh, violating the provincial limits going up while the number of criminal code charges are coming down. And what you can uh, point to as far as the, the administrative suspensions going up is uh, more people are getting caught you after using cannabis while driving, um, because we see those drug related uh, administrative suspensions uh, increasing sharply, it basically accounts for all of the increases that we're seeing the criminal code charges overall for both alcohol and drugs uh, are stable and, and actually decreasing somewhat and the alcohol related uh, administrative suspensions are relatively stable as well. So primarily due to drug-related uh, driving. And, and that, that doesn't mean more people are driving under the influence of drugs. It means more likely that more people are getting caught. And because police have increased access to those roadside uh, oral swabs that can uh, take a, a sample of your, uh, your oral fluid and determine whether you've been uh, recently using cannabis, and uh, more drivers are finding that they're getting caught, uh, whereas they may not have been in the past. It's always a good reminder for people that officers do have those tools to determine cannabis use. Now, um, as another reminder, what are some of the penalties people could face if they are caught uh, for any driving infractions? Sure. And we can talk about kind of a, there's basically two uh, levels of, uh, of offense. There's the criminal code charges, which uh, can carry some very significant uh, financial uh, like fines if you're found guilty. Uh, or potentially jail time if it's a repeat offense or uh, the circumstances are egregious if somebody was injured or killed as a result of uh, impaired driving. Uh, but with all impaired driving offenses, whether it's uh, criminal or uh, the lower level provincial sanctions, uh, they generally come with uh, things like license suspensions, vehicle impoundments, uh, requirements for a weekend uh, driving without impairment course. Those are kind of across the board. The lengths of the suspensions and the impoundments vary according to the seriousness of the offense and how many uh, how many offenses you have on your record as well. That can that can Im impact that as well. Um, there are uh, penalties under the Safe Driver Recognition Program. If you get a provincial uh, administrative suspension, you're looking at four uh, demerits. Um, if you're uh, charged and convicted criminally, uh, you go to at least minus 20 on SGI Safe Driver Recognition Program. And so there's a, a, an additional financial penalty that comes along with that in the, uh, to the tune of, uh, I believe, $1,250. Um, so very significant penalties. Of course, the most significant consequences, and we talk about this all the time, Abby, is the uh, of impaired driving. The most significant con consequences are the the safety 
concerns that it pr presents, the chance that you will be injured or killed or you will injure or kill someone else as a result of your choice to drive impaired. So, you know, the friendly reminder from SGI here is, uh, of course, go out, have a good time, uh, enjoy the beautiful weather that we are seeing on the prairies, but make sure that if your good times include anything that impairs you, just make sure you find a safe ride home. Don't get behind the wheel under the influence of alcohol or drugs and uh, keep the good times rolling. The hope is always that those numbers do continue to go down. Is there anything else that you would like to remind drivers uh, that I may have missed? Oh, I would just say when it comes to impaired driving, one of the things that is positive when we look back over the long term, and I may have uh, talked to you about this before as well, is uh, over the long term, you know, the past decade in Saskatchewan, uh, impaired driving, we have seen those numbers of collisions coming down, the number of injuries and fatalities that result from those collisions coming down, and that's a positive sign. We still have work to do because people are still choosing to drive impaired by alcohol and drugs, but strong enforcement, uh, awareness, uh, including uh, opportunities like this have helped uh, really change the culture when it comes to impaired driving and uh, legislation has been uh, updated as well over the years to give police more t tools, more, uh, more abilities to uh, determine whether somebody has been driving impaired and take those impaired drivers off the road. And we're going to keep talking about it until it's no longer an issue. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining me again. It's always great talking to you about this as it is very important uh, to keep our roads safe. So thank you so much. Thank you, Abby, and take care out there. Well, there is a great development in a story we've been following for weeks now. An orca whale calf that captivated the country after becoming stranded in a lagoon in D.C. has finally freed itself. This video is showing the moment the whale began to make its way out. The orca swam out on its own this morning. It was able to make its way past a sandbar, under a bridge, and is now being monitored in the open ocean. It comes after multiple attempts were made to rescue the orca after she became trapped in late March. That's so nice that she was able to find her way back to where she belongs mm -hmm. and now she can live out the rest of her life in yeah. where she needs to be which is always very heartwarming and she wasn't injured and there yeah. was no cause for concern so that's always nice. Yeah really nice to see. Well that's all we have for you this evening. Thanks so much for joining us and have a great night.